Today is Saturday, April 19th, and these are the before photos of the Baja Doodle Bug racer that I'm going to be converting. It was given to me as a gift, so it makes it a little bit easier to justify the upgrades that I'm going to do. I purchased the Predator 212cc motor from Harbor Freight, along with the new clutch and the mounting plate for the motor. I just went to Home Depot and bought my supplies for redoing the paint. I'm going to make it black, uh, shiny black, uh, and remove obviously the stock engine. So these are the preliminary uh, video to show what it looks like before, and then I'll take some pictures and photos along the way. Okay, before I do all the work on it, I'm going to make a couple videos of the stock engine setup uh, with my son on it. He is 13, weighs about... 95 pounds maybe so I'll get them from a stop um, and we can get them again. okay when my son comes back I'm going ahead and get on it um, I'm 6'2 260 pounds so as you can imagine the acceleration is quite slow but I'll give you a video demonstration of that again. As you can see, I need the new motor. I pulled out my handy dandy workbench here, threw the bike up on top, pulled out my tools. I'm going to start by removing all the cabling uh, and then we'll go from there. I've cut all the zip ties that were around the cabling. Um, I've removed the brake from the left handle and along, along with the grip. Uh, I was concerned about that coming off without cutting it, but it actually was semi loose once I started twisting. And you can see the color difference between the color that the bike originally was and then the sun fade the Arizona sun fade that it has done so again so far I've just removed the brake cable doing my best to keep all bolts and nuts with their accessories so I don't lose anything and I will continue on from there. I'm supposed to unhook the kill switch which is compatible with the Predator 212 engine it was simply one bolt um, that undid the eyelet uh, right there and then a pull pin on the other side mounted to the engine. Uh, the kill switch itself, a couple screws to take off from the handlebar. Um, I also removed the chain cover from the engine mount, uh, which is right there. Next step was to remove the throttle, the throttle connection to the motor, and I also removed the chain. And I put all my stuff down here so I can uh, have room on the table and keep things organized. So we're coming along. Okay, my next step was to remove all the wheel covers, front and rear, uh, and also remove the seat. So as you can see, we're getting down pretty low. Just need to remove the engine, the wheels, and then I will disconnect the steering column from the frame. I think I'm going to leave the foot pegs on as they are simply because I don't think I'm going to deal with the spring system, but I may decide to take that off too. We'll see. Alright, so the engine is out, and I went ahead and removed the spring-loaded foot pegs as well. They weren't as bad as I thought they might be. I had visions of starter recoil springs, and but they weren't. So the engine is out. It had a leaking gas cap when I got it. As you can see, so anytime I rode it or moved the bike around, my garage smelled like gas. So I'm going to go ahead and repaint all that stuff. First, let me remove the wheels. And then I'm going to go ahead and take off the steering column. And then I'll clean it up, spray it off, and uh, right, we're almost back. done. The wheels are off. They were pretty easy. So now all I have left is to remove the steering column, remove the chain tensioner, uh, and the kickstand. As far as moving parts go. And then we begin the uh, clean process. Um, and then uh, prepping for paint. All right, the Baja 
Doodlebug racer. It's completely disassembled with every bolt that can come off off, and it is now prepped, um, well, pre-prepped to be cleaned, all the stickers removed, and then begin the process of uh, prepping the metal for paint. So there it is. Probably took me an hour and hour and a half maybe. I'll have to check the time, but somewhere around an hour to hour and a half to get everything disassembled. And there it is. Officially ready now to clean off the parts. I've got my bucket of soapy water, some cleaning rags, and I'll go ahead and just start washing off the parts to get them as close to clean as possible before I begin the actual prep work on the metal. Okay, so I have officially washed the parts with the soap and water to get off the main stuff. Uh, the stickers are turning into a major pain in the butt, so I've decided to pull out the little sander and use some thicker sandpaper just to get the stickers off. Uh, once I do that, then I'll begin to go over um, most everything with a higher 320 sandpaper as recommended by a good friend to get it uh, smooth and ready for paint. Uh, once that is done, I was also told to get some acetone, which I will then clean the metal parts um, prior to actual paint. So we are getting there. So now I'll just get the stickers off, prep with acetone, and then uh, we'll get another video then. Right now, this thicker uh, sandpaper does wonders for getting off stickers in a hurry. So uh, I have a good amount more to do, but I just had two stickers on there that came off in about 10 seconds. So I'm going to move on to this. And I got one on, on the handlebars. And then I got uh, one or so on the frame. So hopefully we'll be done here in the next minute. Okay, so I got all the stickers off using the thicker grain sandpaper, and then I went to the 320, and I'm now smoothing out everything. Uh, it's, it's very smooth to the touch. So far I've done two pieces. It's a very fast process. Took a little handheld sander, uh, making sure everything is smooth, per the advice of Brian Grove. Um, so i got a couple more pieces to go. Once I do that, um, I'll move on to the acetone phase of cleaning off all the junk. Okay. okay, it's been roughly five hours since I began this project um, of disassembling the Baja Doodlebug racer uh, stock. Uh, I am now at the point where I'm letting a few pieces dry. I just hosed them off after sanding uh, with the fine sandpaper to get all the little uh, scratches and things out. Um, at this point I'm going ahead to use some acetone I'll wipe down all the metal parts, make sure they are as clean as they can possibly be before I do the final phase of painting. And I went with a, a black, uh, shiny paint. Uh, so I will begin that as soon as I'm done with the acetone process. Again, I'm roughly five hours into this project so okay, far. I'm on to my final phase of prep before I can paint. Um, I've let all the pieces dry from hosing them off and just getting the dust off from the sanding that I did. So now I'm going to use some acetone, clean off all the metal parts, allow them to dry, and uh, then we'll begin the painting process uh, after that. Okay, so it's around 2.15 uh, Arizona time, and I believe I started around 9 this morning, so I'm a little over 5 hours, 5 hours and 15 minutes. All of these parts um, have been cleaned. Uh, I've used acetone to uh, uh, make sure they're thoroughly clean, and it actually leaves a little bit of a tacky, uh, sticky feel to the Paint, current paint which will make it pretty easy to spray paint over it. I'm now going to move my shop uh, into the backyard so I can spray paint all this stuff without getting uh, paint everywhere and uh, we'll go from right, there. I got my pieces ready to paint laid out on some cardboard that I found um, and then I also got the uh, Rust-Oleum Winter Cover uh, Paint and Primer, the shiny black from Home Depot. So, I'm going to go ahead and paint this, let it dry, and I'll show you the pieces when they're dry. Alright, my first coat of paint is on, and I'm very pleased with the way that it's uh, it's going on with the gloss and the, the ease. It looks like it's sticking on there. And I'm getting basically no bleed. I just can't get to all areas until I flip some stuff over, but super happy with the way it's going on. Apparently the prep work definitely paid off because it does look good. I'm going to go ahead and let these dry. I'll go ahead and hit spots that, uh, that I see are starting to bleed through a little bit. 
um, and then I'll uh, get some more video as I flip things over and continue on. While I'm waiting for the paint to dry on the frame, I went ahead and decided to uh, put some tire wet shine on the little tires to make them look pretty. I cleaned the rims when I was cleaning off the frame, so everything's going to look pretty good when we get it all back together. All right, I have flipped everything over. I've repainted uh, everything that I could see that needed to be retouched up. Um, I got about another 10 to 15 minutes of dry time. Um, but again, I'm very happy with the way the paint has come out. Uh, there's no runs. The prep work uh, definitely paid off. I'm getting a, a shiny gloss all the way through with no um, blemishes from the metal coming through, which was my goal. So I'm very happy. So again, a few more minutes to let this dry. And then my goal is today to get the frame back together um, and then wait for my parts to show up. Uh, the new motor, the mount, and the clutch, which will be here sometime in the next week. Uh, but as long as the bike's ready for it, then I can slap those in when they come and ready to ride. So I'll get some more pigs along the way, but uh, waiting for some paint to dry. While I had a few more minutes to wait for the paint to dry, I decided to pull the old, the original engine uh, out. I also moved my little shop over to the side yard because I didn't want to be in the sun anymore. Um, but if you want to know how to get off the clutch uh, and you've tried to use your 10 millimeter on the, the bolt on the front, the whole clutch will spin. So what you need to do is see on the back side of the clutch there's actually some teeth in the back. So use a pair of channel locks to just grab a hold of those teeth and that won't allow the clutch to move uh, when you loosen the bolt on the front. I'm going to go ahead and take that off and then we'll see what we got to do. Okay, once you take off the bolt on the front, uh, which is a 10 millimeter, yeah, I think you can see that, it's a 10 millimeter socket size. Uh, once you take it off, here all it is is a, a bolt, lock washer and a, a washer. Um, the whole clutch, you can it'll just pull out. There's nothing else to it. It is all one big assembly. Um, this is, of course, the 12 tooth pound 35 chain, which comes standard on the doodle bug. So if you did not know that, your chain is a pound 35. I initially had to buy a new chain and didn't know what it was. So um, from there, actual drive shaft just has a groove in it. And you can see that inside of the clutch on the inner, uh, I'll get a good picture for you, but there's actually a little uh, cut out there that goes right into that groove. So that might help somebody down the road. Okay, and if you're like me and you're deciding to go ahead and modify uh, your Baja Doodle Bug and you want to know whether your current clutch on the 97cc motor uh, is compatible with the new Predator 212, the answer is no. The Clutch size on the Doodle Bug is a 5 8 uh, as posted online as well. Um, and the new Predator 212 engine has a 3 quarter inch clutch. So they are not compatible. So you will need to buy the 3 quarter inch uh, 12 tooth uh, pound 35 chain clutch for the Predator 212. Um, it will not work um, to use your standard one on it. So that probably clear up some questions that someone might have too. Alright, so I flipped all the parts back over and went uh, touched up those things that needed to be touched up. Uh, some of it was a little bit uh, apparently tacky when I flipped it over, so some of the stuff stuck to the cardboard and I had to touch it up. Uh, the only thing that I think I may need to redo is the chain cover. I don't know what we can see on the video here or not, but uh, there's a couple lines that are kind of going through it that I'm not super happy about, so. I may redo that one since uh, I wouldn't put that on until the motor came anyway. So I'm going to give another half hour, 40 minutes or so to finish up drying completely so that I can start putting everything back together. But uh, we're getting there. Almost done. All right, one quick note on the tires. If you questioned what the tire pressure is or should be on these, uh, if you can see the side of the tire wall, it actually says that the max load is 75 kilograms at 35 kPa cold. So if you do a conversion on Google for 35 kPa, you get somewhere around 5 psi. But I don't know if anybody's ever tried riding on these tires with 5 psi. That's basically nothing in them. So I have 20 psi in there right now. And they say they're tubeless. Uh, I rode over two miles yesterday 
and my kids have been riding for plenty more than that um, and they haven't had any issues so I'm not sure if down the road we might but certainly 5 PSI does not uh, get the job done and with me on it uh, it drags so that's not going to cut it either so again I had 20 PSI running running good with a 260 pound rider a 140 pound rider or, or so and then a 95 pound rider as well all right it's time to begin uh, reassembling the painted parts I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically reverse the order that I took them off so I'm gonna start with the handlebars um, and then go from there so here we are putting it all back together now all right so the handlebars are put back on I went ahead and held off on painting the um, steering column bolt and not until I got them back on because I knew it would probably strip off anyway with the, the paint so once I get uh, this section completed I'll go ahead and paint those and touch up anything that I bump or scrape along the way so next I'm gonna go ahead and do the kickstand and the tires I wanted to make a quick note as I was putting back on the kickstand um, that I did not realize when I was taking it off uh, the kickstand comes with a nut and bolt that hold it on but once you get the nut off the back side the threading still goes into the kickstand so what I did was I took the nut off and I thought the the bolt would just push through and it wasn't coming out so I tried hitting it from the bottom and kind of jacked up a few threads on the bottom before I realized you actually have to now twist that thing out and twist it back in to get it to where you can even put the bolt back on so don't make the same mistake I did by trying to hit it out get the nut off and then unscrew the the bolt out of the kickstand completely and it does not hit out okay okay the wheels are back on handlebars are on the kickstand is on the kickstand took me a little more time because like I said when I tried pounding it out to get it out I, I damaged a few of the threads on the end so I had to use my uh, cutoff wheel to trim it down a little bit so I could get a bolt back on. Uh, but again, the wheels are on, all shiny and clean. Everything's looking good. I'll move on to the, uh, the foot pegs, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. I would recommend taking a picture of the foot peg before you take it off so that you can remember how the spring goes on. Um, there's not too many ways for it to go on, but uh, it is designed to where if it's uh, back, that it will go back forward automatically. So before you take this off, I recommend taking a picture. Uh, luckily, I did do that, so it made it a little easier putting it back on. Otherwise, the spring can be a little confusing as to what it's supposed to be doing. All right, I am installing the brake on the left handle. Um, I've simply pushed it in a little farther than it needs to be so that I can stick the rubber grip on there first and if you've never put one of those on the easiest way to do it is to get uh, some soapy water which I've done and put it all over the handle first and then the grip will slide right on and it will dry tight okay it is six uh, roughly 6 30 at night so nine and a half hours and finally to the point where I'm calling it done until the engine and the other components show up uh, the only thing I still need to do, I don't have any more black zip ties with me, so I need to buy some more of those so that I can zip the brake cable to the frame. Um, everything else will be done once the motor comes, which is simply the throttle, uh, mounting plate, uh, the clutch to the motor, and the kill switch. Other than that, uh, most of the day, but uh, came out looking really good. I'm going to go ahead and touch up a few minor things that happened. Um, putting everything back together um, but very small very minor and overall the project came out great I'm super happy I'll go ahead and make follow-up videos when uh, it's ready okay today is Saturday April 26 2014 it's been a week since I uh, began working on this uh, basically just waited for all the parts to come in um, which were the mounting plate the new motor uh, the clutch and a couple of the miscellaneous uh, pieces along with the new seat cover which I have not actually grabbed from the mailbox yet. I went ahead and installed the mounting plate, the PMR mounting plate, uh, an adjustable mounting plate for easier installation of six and a half horsepower engine. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and begin working on the throttle connection uh, for the motor. All right, I went ahead and uh, hooked up the throttle cable to the throttle. In order to get access to it, I removed the air filter cover. Uh, it's two 10 millimeter bolts 
down by the carburetor and then the whole thing pulls off I didn't remove uh, all the hoses the one just came out um, so went ahead and hooked up uh, you do have to loosen the main throttle bolt here it's tight from the factory so you won't get a easy spring back from the throttle arm so went ahead and uh, did that again all the accessories or all the uh, hookup for the throttle cable are already on the engine I bought a couple not knowing if they would be but it's uh, they're already on there so you don't need to buy any additional hardware to hook up your throttle um, and, it could, and it will work for both the rear entrance uh, or the side entrance they, both of them are there so that'll save somebody a few dollars that you don't need unnecessarily I went ahead and removed most of the stickers off the engine as another person said this one on the front here regarding emissions is a pain in the butt basically you gotta scrape it with your nail I may use some goof off but I don't want to take any paint off the actual motor so we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes all right, the throttle assembly uh, is back on. I reattached uh, the air cleaner um, housing. Um, and just for comparison's sake, I stuck the old Baja 97cc motor, uh, the original one, next to the new Predator 212 so you can get a size difference. Predator is easily twice as big. Uh, kind of a funny little side by side picture of what was and what is. I added oil to the new Predator. I just happen to have some uh, 1040 synthetic uh, for a motorcycle. So I'm going to put that in there since we're in Arizona. Hot temperature anyway. I um, have not done the clutch yet. I'm going to go ahead and get everything, the motor mounted now. And then see what, uh, what I need to do next in terms of getting the clutch on there. And the alignment with the rear sprocket. Okay, the motor is set on top of the mounting plate right now. In order to get it in there, you do have to remove the gas tank. There's uh, two bolts that connect from the front here and here and then there's also one that connects from the rear back here. This guy was a little sneakier uh, but once you get that off you gotta remove uh, two hoses and one clamp to remove the gas tank to give you room to set the motor on top of the mount. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the uh, clutch and then line up the sprockets and bolt everything down. Okay, the engine's back on completely. I reinstalled the gas tank and the clutch is installed as well. I mounted the throttle. Um, so now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just fire it up for the first time. Hopefully we're good to go um, after I put it all the way on, but I wanted to get that done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first, make sure everything fires up the way that it should. I'll get a video of it running and then I'll install the original kill switch after I know everything's working without it. Alright, so, there we go. Yay, we're up and running. Two poles, going to fire right up. Burn like a kitten. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and do the... Uh, Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, original kill switch. Um, the seat cover is in my mailbox somewhere, but I don't have a staple gun. I'm going to borrow one from my dad, but I'll go ahead and get it hooked back up so I can start riding this thing. But we're almost done. Okay, I've reattached the factory kill switch. And you'll notice that the wires that are on the factory one are a push pin and an eyelet. So after reading some forms, basically they say all you have to do is the new kill switch on the Predator is also a push pin going into this green adapter. Uh, one is an oil sensor kill switch, not enough oil it will shut it off, and the other is the engine kill switch manual. So all they said to do is strip, cut off this push pin, strip a little bit of the wire back, shove it in with the connection of these two when you push this push pin back inside, and then mount the eyelet on the uh, on the frame for a ground, and then you should both be able to work without cutting any of the wiring. So that's what I'm going to try to do. All right, so there is the push pin cut off, and I've stripped about a quarter of an inch of wire back. And again, all I'm going to do is shove that in 
with those two connections. Okay, the factory kill switch has been put back on. Uh, as I stated, I simply strip the one end of the wire and shove it in this green connection there to get uh, one side of it. For the other side, simply remove this thing right here with this bolt, an 8mm. Pull it off, stick the eyelet back behind it, and put the bolt back on. Uh, in this position, either kill switch, the motor mounted kill switch, or the one on the handlebar will now turn it off. But in order to make it run, they both have to be in the on position. So I'll just leave this one in the on position at all times. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. Once it's up, I'll show you that the kill switch on the handlebar actually works. Right, it is running. So, again, you don't have to cut any wires or anything. Just push it in there, and it works great. Okay, the bike is completely done, uh, other than i got to redo the seat. Um, and I used some really awesome neon zip ties for now, because I don't have any other ones. So until I get to the store and get some more, but... I just took it for a two mile ride and uh, again I weigh 260 pounds and if I'm sitting on the rear end of the seat it still wants to do a wheelie uh, on acceleration so I'm laughing the whole time but this thing is absolutely awesome. I'll get some video of me riding it with my kids riding it and stuff like that but needless to say if you've got a doodle bug or you can get one at a garage sale, um, totally worth it redoing the engine and I'm super happy with it. So I'll get some footage in a little bit but it is done, totally working just as I'd hoped. And I am super excited. final video showing the completion of the bike. I got the new seat cover installed. Uh, the chain is on. The chain guard has been added. In order to use the old chain guard uh, with the new setup, I used a couple of uh, angle iron um, clips, I guess, or brackets. Um, they were actually in an L shape designed for the throttle a connection to the engine if it wasn't already there I didn't know if I would need it or not so bottom and it came with two of these little L brackets that I just hammered straight and then mounted those to the old uh, chain guard area and then raised the chain guard up the length of that L bracket which is roughly an inch and a half um, and in doing so you avoid uh, rattling uh, with the chain hitting the chain guard and it actually is a perfect fitment you just have to cut it out um, I used an, an angle grinder a cutoff wheel um, to make a horseshoe shape um, where you can see that it was going to hit the bolt at the bottom. I actually created a perfect fit for the chain guard. Um, everything else is done other than the uh, nice bright green neon zip ties, which I need to get some black ones. But uh, it's it's fun and it's awesome. It came out exactly the way I'd hoped. So final video. Um, I am done. Hope someone else can uh, do the same thing and enjoy it.